Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying an algebraic expression. We have x plus y plus z is equal to zero, and we're supposed to evaluate this expression uh, for uh, this value. Obviously, you, would, you wouldn't always know that this is going to turn out a numerical value, but in this case, it does, and we're going to find that value. I'm going to be presenting uh, two methods, even though I'm going to talk about an alternative as well, but uh, I'm not going to complete that method. So let's start with the first method. So I'm going to be uh, doing a lot of algebraic manipulations. So for example, if x plus y plus z is equal to zero, I'm going to square both sides of this. So it's going to give me the following, x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 2xy, so I can probably take out a 2 here, xy plus xz plus yz is equal to 0. So what I did was square both sides here, and I again got 0 because 0 squared equals 0. So now from here we can isolate x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And that can be written as negative 2 times xy plus xz plus yz. This is something we're going to be using later, so let's go ahead and save it. Now, I want to get something similar for the sum of cubes. So for the sum of cubes, I'm going to be using a formula that we used before. And if you remember, x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3xyz is factorable. And one of the factors is x plus y plus z, and it's, it's easy to show. The other factor is going to be quadratic, x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus xy minus xz minus yz. Now the second factor can also be written as a sum of squares, a half of x minus y squared plus x minus z squared plus y minus z squared as well, which shows that the second factor is always greater than or equal to zero. Great. So now, we know that x plus y plus z is equal to zero. Remember that? That was a given. So now we can go ahead and set that equal to zero. And that gives us really nice results because from here we get x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3xyz equals zero, which implies, which implies that the sum of cubes can be written as 3xyz. We're also going to save that. Remember now, in our expression, the numerator is made up of the product, and the bottom one, the numerator or denominator, is the sum of the fifth power. So we do need something for the sum of fifth powers. Let's go ahead and save these two. Now, I'm going to multiply these together because that's going to give us the fifth powers and, of course, other terms, but let's go ahead and Take the sum of squares and multiply by the sum of cubes. Now, a couple things to remember here. We do have an expression for the sum of squares. We do have an expression for the sum of cubes. But first, I want to simplify this expression as much as possible. So let me go ahead and do that. And then later on, I'm going to do the substitutions. So if you distribute this completely, you're going to get the following. I'm going to you know, switch the terms around a little bit. but you're going to get x to the fifth power plus y to the fifth power plus z to the fifth power. And then you're going to be getting a combination of like two different variables like x and y, for example. Uh, they're going to be coming in second and third powers and they're going to switch around. So it's going to look like this. We're going to get x cubed y squared plus x squared y cubed. That's for x, y. Let's do it for x, z. So like x cubed z squared and then x squared z cubed. And then let's do it for y and z y cubed z squared and y squared z cubed. That's pretty much the whole thing. We should, be ha uh, we should have nine terms, and we do. Now, this is something we do want to, you know, uh, solve for. But let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit more. Notice that x plus y plus z is equal to 0. And I can go ahead and factor this by grouping. And that's going to be helpful. So I can take out x squared y squared times x plus y, x squared z squared times x plus z, and y squared z squared times y plus z. Great. Now here, I can use the fact that x plus y plus z is equal to 0, right? So 
That means x plus y can be replaced with negative z, x plus z can be replaced with negative y, and y plus z can be replaced with negative x, which is really cool because now our expression is going to be factorable. Uh, it's going to be much nicer. So we get x to the fifth plus y to the fifth plus z to the fifth. Now notice that all the terms are negative here. So we can take out negative x, y, z. And inside the parentheses, we get x, y plus x, z plus y, z. Since we took out the negative, everything inside will be positive. And this is really nice and simple. But remember, it's equal to this, right? So we kind of got a, you know, product uh, for this. Uh, but now we, we're going to simplify it a little bit more because we're going to, first of all, let's go ahead and isolate x to the fifth plus y to the fifth plus z to the fifth. And now we're going to do the substitutions. Okay, great. So now I can write this as, since this equals that, right? So they're equal. I can go ahead and write the following. x to the fifth plus y to the fifth plus z to the fifth. So I'm going to add this uh, negative x, y, z thing on the other side. So it's going to give me the following, x to the fifth plus y to the fifth plus z to the fifth equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared multiplied by sum of cubes plus xyz times xy plus xz plus yz. Great. Now let's go ahead and uh, substitute something for the sum of squares and something for the sum of cubes. But before that, let's go ahead and find out uh, what the product is going to look like. We have something for them, right? We know that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to this, and the sum of cubes is equal to 3xyz. So we can now go ahead and multiply those together. All right, great. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, what is x squared plus y squared plus z squared multiplied by x cubed? plus y cubed plus z cubed. This is what we're going to find out next. So now x squared plus y squared plus z squared can be written as negative 2 times the quantity xy plus xz plus yz. Remember that. We've done that before. And for the sum of cubes, I'm going to write 3xyz. So from here, we get the product as negative 6xyz multiplied by xy plus xz plus yz. So this is equal to the product of the sum of squares and the sum of cubes. Great. Now, since we know that, we can go ahead and substitute that here, right, that expression. So that gives us x to the fifth plus y to the fifth plus z to the fifth equals the product, which is equivalent to negative 6xyz times xy plus xz plus yz. And then to that, I'm going to be adding 1 times xyz times xy plus xz plus yz. And now notice that these are like terms. So negative 6 apples plus 1 apple, that's going to give us negative 5 apples, right? If that makes sense. So negative 5 xyz multiplied by xy plus xz plus yz. Awesome. So I got something for the sum of the fifth powers. I got something for the product of second and third powers. So I can go ahead and put it all together. Now, our original expression was, remember, x squared plus y squared plus z squared multiply by the sum of the cubes divided by the sum of the fifth powers. And remember, we've done a similar problem before. I'll try to link that down below. Uh, they're very similar, actually, the idea. But that one has an xyz as one of the terms. Anyways, or factors. Uh, the top, I can replace with this one right here. That's going to be negative 6xyz times xy plus xz plus yz. And the bottom, the sum of fifth powers can be replaced with negative 5xyz times xy plus xz plus yz. And that obviously can be simplified. Let's go ahead and simplify this, provided that xy plus xz plus yz does not equal 0, provided that xyz does not equal 0, so on and so forth. We can go ahead and simplify this, and we get 6 over 5 as the numerical answer. Great. This brings us to the end of the first method. 
Therefore, we're going to talk about the second method now real quick. And then I'll briefly mention the alternative like as the third method. So since x plus y plus z is equal to 0, and if we know that this is going to be a numerical expression at the end, we can go ahead and you know make up some values. Suppose x equals 1, y equals 1, and z equals negative 2. Our initial condition is satisfied, so let's go ahead and plug this into our expression. And if we do, you already know the expression, I don't, I don't think I need to rewrite it. We're going to have the sum of squares, 1 plus 1 plus 4. We're going to have the sum of cubes, 1 plus 1 minus 8, remember negative 2 cubed, divided by the sum of fifth powers is going to be 1 plus 1 minus 32. And this is going to be equal to 6 times negative 6 divided by negative 30. And this is going to give us a 5 and we're going to get 6 over 5 again. Awesome. So we get the same answer, which is really cool. Second method is obviously easier. But, but of course, if you're taking an exam, this is probably not going to work. But if it's a multiple choice question, definitely it is going to work. And some math competitions are multiple choice, so that should be fine. Now, here's an alternative. Maybe call that third method if you want. The third method basically involves, and I'm pretty sure you guys will come up with different ways. But the third method basically involves the fact that, okay, so I can solve for x plus y. And I can replace x plus y with negative z. Now, Here's what you can do. Raise it to the second power, like cubit, I mean third power. Square it, and then fifth power it. All right? We don't have a quint to something? I don't know. Quint, quintic. Okay, fifth power. And then you're going to get different expressions. Put it all together. And at the end, you're going to get 6 over 5 again. And this brings us to the end of this video. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.